All right. So what we're going to cover over the next hour is an overview of SWAT. And we're basically going to um, also have a look at our new SWAT for Windows application um, and also our updated admin portal. Um, happy to take some questions towards the end, but because of the tight timelines, um, I'll try not to take questions throughout the, the, the session today. Uh, just for those of you who are or aren't familiar with SWAT, it's really designed for reps or account managers in B2B inventory-based businesses, which you all tend to be. Um, I'm just going to mute a couple of more people. Oh. Uh, and effectively, it's about looking at a repeat um, customer base. Um, with repeat sales and looking for patterns using artificial intelligence uh, to optimize those sales within that channel. Our big idea is that growth is a formula on acquisition, new customers plus retention of existing customers and attachment or cross-sell or upsell to those existing customers. Our focus is on retention and attachment. We're not going to help you with the acquisition piece. That's where your marketing um, and product positioning, those sorts of things come to the fore. What we want to help you with is around retention and attachment. So we've got three products in our suite. You should be familiar with our Windows desktop application sales matrix. We're going to talk about today is SWAT, which is our mobile and our new Windows app and effectively uh, dashboards. We connect our system to an array of different products. Uh, we've got people on the phone who are using um, everything from Attaché to Advanced Business Manager, Sage 300, Cybiz, even I think um, a couple of NetSuite and Advanced Business Manager partners. Um, what we're going to talk about, what, SWOT exists around this idea of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Effectively, the sales matrix desktop application grew and grew over a 20 year period to be very complex in its capability um, and, and very deep in, in its functionality. And what we found is the average rep or account manager is not technical. Um, they tend to be um, people who focus on their particular industry rather than being overly tech savvy and, and those sorts of things. So SWOT was about how do we make it simplified but still provide a depth of understanding about what's going on from an analytics perspective to really have an impact on sales. So what you find with the SWOT application is, is it takes very complex algorithms and it, it presents it in, in a plain English way, broken down into these things called strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In, in summary, strengths are things that are positive about the customer that um, are represented in their transaction history. Weaknesses are things that have stopped occurring. So they've stopped buying certain products. Um, there might be um, uh, some various product groups that they're not buying from, et cetera, um, where they historically had had a, a habit of buying. Opportunities are around um, cross-sell, upsell opportunities, um, where similar customers are buying products, where this customer might be buying the Big Mac, but not the fries and the Coke, those sort of things. And then threats are trends that are starting to manifest themselves that may not um, be obvious, such as decreasing margins and, and those sorts of things. Um, the way that SWOT gets its data is to pull using a script out of your um, ERP accounting solution. Uh, that script can be tailored and every single one of you will have a different script based on how you categorize data within your uh, ERP solution. And it can be tailored. The, the more tailored that is to your data setup, the more accurate the things like um, opportunities is going to be because it has a better definition of what like for like or what commonalities exist amongst your customer base. Um, effectively, there is a timing delay. So you need to be aware of this. Um, if there is a nightly sync occurring with your data from your ERP system, the algorithms then run over a period of 24 hours. So between um, your initial sync and, and when that represents itself in the um, system can be 24 to 48 hours based on the timing of um, your syncs and, and the way it works. It's not designed to be live. The, the, the sort of algorithms that we're running aren't about real time. It's about patterns over an extended period of time. So that's that's how it works. So let's, let's jump in. I'm going to jump in on my phone and we're going to have a bit of an overview of um, SWOT, how we can use it from a um, 
a, a rep perspective and things like call planning and, and getting the information out of the system. We're then going to jump back onto my laptop and we're going to run through. Um, uh, we're going to run through the new Windows application that you can use back in the office. Uh, we're then going to talk about the portal, including our new um, our new notifications, which is coming into the application. So I'm just swapping over to my phone and then I'm bringing up SWAT. So just as an explanation, this is the first screen that you land on, which is the, the customer um, card file or customer list, um, however you want to describe that. What you'll see is there's some color coding. Just so everyone's familiar with the color coding, the, the traffic light on the left or that dot on the left that represents where the customer sits as far as revenue within your business. Um, a red represents a low revenue customer. A blue is actually a prospect or someone who hasn't had any transactions with you. A gray is they may have had some transactions in the past, but nothing recent that even warrants counting them as a customer. An amber says they're a pretty average customer. They sit in the middle of the bell curve as far as your customer list. And then a green there with Allen Extruders means they're one of your best customers as far as revenue. We all know that revenue is a vanity metric and that margin is the real um, thing that matters within the business. And that's where the color of the actual text of the customer name represents the margin. So black, because it's easier to read than yellow, sits in the middle. So the, the ones at the top there are all average margin customers. Um, you'll see green is a high margin customer and you'll see red is a low margin customer. So American Rentals there is an average revenue customer, but a low margin customer. So that's just a, a nice little um, visual before you jump into a particular customer around who, who they are and what they represent to your business. The other thing I wanna show is um, ways that we can limit that list. So up the top, is a little tick box and, and what we call the hamburger menu, the little three horizontal lines. When I click on that, it's a filter for my list. So what are my top customer opportunities? These are the ones that the algorithms are effectively saying um, we can generate the best outcome from, from a revenue and margin perspective. Who are the best customers this week based on sales? Who, who's had the most sales this week? What are the top customers this month? And what are the top customers this year? Now, if you are set up that this is limited to your customer base, that will apply within your customer base. If I have a look at the top opportunities, it's pretty logical that most of the top opportunities are gonna be my high revenue, good margin customers. And that's what it's, the algorithms are telling me here. And it's filtered that list down. And you'll see that it's no longer in alphabetical order, it's actually in opportunity order. So it's thinking that Van Buren County has particularly good opportunities to, to increase sales. So if we go down to the opportunity section, um, it's telling me products that similar customers have bought that these guys have never bought. And it's actually algorithmically working out that they're quite likely to buy these. And that's why they put them at the top of, of, of the list. Now we're gonna come back to the SWOT area, but that's just showing you the filters in that top right. The next button along is the ability to add prospects to the system. You'll see the blue one there I've, I've added. If, I just want to basically include a name in the system so that when I do my call plan, I'm not forgetting to call in on that customer. Then basically that's why I would add a prospect into the system. It just sits in SWAT. It doesn't synchronize up to your accounting system or anything like that. It's more a reminder around your call planning, which is the bit I want to talk about now. That's the third um, uh, element up there, which is the favorites. Um, at the moment, if I click on my favorites, I've only got one customer there as, as a favorite which is a low revenue, high margin customer, Kalamazoo. Um, but I might be sitting down, it's Friday. Um, I'm doing my plan for next week. Obviously public holiday in a lot of states on Monday, but um, I'm planning out my Tuesday through Friday next week. Now I know that I want to call on Artiflex Manufacturing. So I'm going to open Artiflex Manufacturing and I'm going to hit the star in the top right corner. And I've now added Artiflex Manufacturing to my favorites list. I'm also going to call in on Bowers Manufacturing, click on them, add them to the favorites. And I'll keep going, Ito. Keep in mind I can scroll or I can come up here and I can start to type. So if I know the client's got the word manufacturing in their name, oh yes, I do want to call in on Hastings Manufacturing. Um, 
or I could even do if it was based on a suburb. I don't know if I've got, I'm sure there's a ville somewhere in here. Uh, there's lots of villages. I might want to call in on that one, Granville uh, Fire Department. So what I've just been doing is I'm constructing a favorites list. If I click back up on my favorites, I've now just got those six customers there. And these are a part of my call plan for next week. Um, I could do a daily call plan or, or I could do weekly or fortnight, have whatever you want to do. It's just a list of favorites. So I remember these are the ones that I want to deal with that, so I don't have to flick through the full list next week when I come into here. Now we've got this on the screen. Let's, let's talk about what a, a call plan is all about, which is effectively having something to speak to the customer about. So if I have a look at Bowers Manufacturing, these guys are a good customer. You can see they're a high revenue, high margin customer. These are the customers that we really want to look after. They've got a very good cross sell. They work, they're buying 51 different products off us um, over time. They're actually buying 22 products off us on a regular basis, if you see down the bottom of the strengths area. If I want to see what the 22 products they buy off a regular basis, the black arrow, and, and keep in mind, I'm on an Android, Android device. The arrows and some of the, the the, the graphics are slightly different on an iPhone as they are to a Windows device. But on an Android device, a little black arrow represents that I can expand that out and I can have a look at what are the products they're buying regularly and how regularly are they buying? So you can see there, the first one they're buying every seven weeks, the second one they're buying every three weeks, et cetera, et cetera. So when I'm calling in on my customer, these are the products that I'm expecting that they're gonna wanna order if I'm taking orders um, whilst I'm there. Other strengths, of it's all designed to be plain English. So I don't need to basically explain every one of these strengths, but the idea is these are the positives about this customer. They're, they're, their sales have grown strongly over the last 12 months. It's pretty incredible that these guys have no weaknesses. So they haven't particularly stopped buying certain products. They, they, there's no threat, so they haven't sort of squeezed us on margin. But where there is, there's some opportunities for me to talk to this customer about. So what I can see is 11 similar customers have bought the two-ply toilet tissue 176 times. So this is a product that I do want to speak to this customer about when I, when I call in on them. Now, the second product there is five similar customers have bought the mixed economy rags. What I might say is, well, I know they're not going to buy that because they're buying the larger packet size or they're buying um, an alternative that I am selling to them. So I, I may not want to show that. So what I can do is I can click onto that particular product and it brings up the actions menu. So you see here, I'm looking at that mixed economy rags and I can do various things. I can email the customer because it's bringing through my contacts from out of my ERP system. I can call them. I can basically navigate down to the product SWOT. So I can have a look at who are the other customers that are buying this product. Let's do that for a minute. So if I wanna see who are the two customers or the 10 customers that buy it regularly, Oh yeah, I can see who buys that product. That is quite similar to, to that particular customer. Now I've gone back to Bowers and what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna um, hide this because I actually don't want this to show um, because I know why they're not buying it. So when I hide it, you'll actually see that that now basically drops off my list and there'll be four things there in my list. What SWOT does is it's always looking for five opportunities for upsell and cross-sell. Uh, excuse my children in the background. Uh, it's a student-free day, unfortunately. Um, anyway, basically, at the moment, because I've just hidden that one, it will be four. But next time the sync update happens, which will be overnight, it'll then look for a fifth one that now represents um, an opportunity for this particular customer. So it's always looking for the five best opportunities um, to, to cross-sell into that customer. Now, furthermore, you see that this customer sits in my KB group. Specifically within the KB group, there are two products that others within the KB group, group, group are buying that these guys aren't buying. So again, this is a conversation I want to have with Bowers when I go and visit them. Getting back to my list, once I've visited Bowers or I've called them and I've had the conversation, I can just click and hold and then delete them off my favorites list. So that removes them out of my call plan. And I know I've got five, five more calls to make today or, or this week. And I continue to go through those calls. Uh, let's pick up one that does have some um, weaknesses against them. Well, here's an example. This customer hasn't bought off us in three months. Um, they usually purchase on average every six weeks and they haven't been buying off us um, in the last um, three months. So there, there, there may be an issue with that customer. Hopefully they're not buying off one of our competitors. Um, so I'm definitely going to call those guys. 
Um, some of the other weaknesses is they used to buy a particular product line every two weeks, but they haven't bought it in the last two months. So again, this is where the algorithms are looking for these anomalies. Um, if we know why they're not buying that anymore because we've ranged that product out or they're, they're buying a replacement, again, I can hide it. I'd click on it and I hide it and it disappears out of my list. So it doesn't remind me of that again. Now, the managers that are on the line don't want you hiding things unless you've actioned it. So if it's showing that they're basically stop buying a line that you've deleted, then it, the owner should be on the sales rep to actually upsell in the alternative and not remove it from the list un, until you've got the alternative in there. And if I wanna see what they are buying, that's where if I scroll down along the bottom, I can actually look at the activity, which shows me every product they've bought over the last six, 12, 24 months, depending on what my setting is. So I can actually see by value, by units by margin, what are the products that they've been buying off us. The other element there is the graph, which is a seasonality. So you can see what, what when they're bought. So this is a, a new customer, obviously, in December. And that's, uh, sorry, yeah, it looks like they've been a new customer. There's no real seasonality with these guys. But uh, if I pick someone else, there might be a bit more seasonality there. There's a little bit more crossover with this customer. Uh, you'll also see that the contacts, if there are contacts coming through, um, will bring through the contacts out of your ERP system. We also provide you with a profile. So if you want to know what groupings we've used for this customer, we will pull the groupings out of your ERP, the ones down the bottom there, the group one, two, three, and we can have up to five groupings per customer. Um, they're in the JV group, they're in group two MI, and they're also in Grand Rapids. But I can also bring in other demographics that your ERP system may not look at. So the ones above, look from location above, will be specific to sales swap. So basically I can specify what type of business this is. Um, they're a not-for-profit. I can specify their estimated turnover. I can specify the number of staff that we think they have. Now, the reason for doing that in SWOT, it gives us more demographics to compare like for like. So there is value in having that information in SWOT and it will always be then used by the algorithms to, to better classify what similar customers look like. So where you get the opportunity to add those additional demographics, um, we do encourage it. So that is um, the, the, the use of the, the, the star or, or the favorites as a means of creating my call plan. Just a reminder, once I've called in, I just click and hold and then it brings up the delete menu to, to allow me to delete that customer from my favorites list. It's just a handy way when we're doing our call planning to um, effectively leverage um, that favorites to, to, to do that. I'm gonna talk more about um, other features of SWOT now. You'll see down the bottom, I've been focused on, on customer SWOT. There's also this concept of product SWOT. Product SWOT's a good one to look at. Um, the example I give, I had a client a few years ago who sold rosehip oil. And there was an, uh, 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 an article on a current affair one night on how wonderful rosehip oil was. And then within a few days nationwide, we sold out of rosehip oil. And my client was one of the, the core distributors of that product. What we implemented was this idea of, you know, trending products. What are the products that are selling well this week? And, and sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. You may not have seen the current affair episode as to why rosehip oil is all of a sudden selling well. But just to see across your customer base, what is selling well is a nice um, uh, thing to look at. Um, you'll also see when we drill down, we can actually see who is buying those products off us, what the activity is. You know, the activity shows us which customers are buying those products. So we can get some really good information um, from the product SWOT that can help us from a sales perspective. The other reason for product SWOT is people in the marketing team or, or in the production team can come in here and actually look for opportunities and weaknesses and strengths that they can take into consideration when they're looking at marketing. Um, for example, um, five customers have stopped buying this. Why have five customers stopped buying this particular product? Let's contact them and find out whether they're buying an alternative or whether they've um, just, you know, the shelf label has fallen off and they weren't aware they weren't selling it anymore. Um, the next icon along the bottom is about to change. When we jump into the Windows application, you'll actually see that it has changed. Um, we're making a bit of a change to reminders. It will basically be replaced by what we call notifications. So at the moment, you, you will see in the iOS, that's the Apple and the Android 
app, you will see this thing called reminders, which is the ability to set yourself a little reminder against each of your customers or products that you can then mark off as you action those reminders. For example, I might go into action, sorry, into action fabricators. Similar customers are buying this ProCell battery. I may make a reminder to myself about that. Um, I can type. That'll do. I can set the reminder for a particular date. I can basically um, put in additional notes, etc. And then when I effectively exit that note, that will now be a reminder that appears on the reminders tab. What we're doing is we're replacing that now with, um, with notifications. And so effectively we'll be able to replace reminders with notifications that come through on the reminder date that reminds you to, to action that particular um, item, if that makes sense. Notifications is also gonna have much more broad um, usage, which I'll talk about when we jump into um, the, the Windows app, because I'll be able to show you it in, in action. The other thing I wanna show you here is, is the settings tab. The settings tab um, allows you to change a, a number of things, um, your units, whether they are fractional or not. So whether you wanna have decimal places in your um, units, you can turn that on or off. Um, you can change your, your language. If English is a second language, we do actually have other languages within the system and all the SWOT analysis will be um, changed to that language. The number of months that it shows within the activity grid, I can change from six to 24 months. We can also have a filter there based on just looking at your customer region or your, your, your assigned customers. The way that we display your customers, if you wanna see the code, if you wanna see the code and the name, and the same goes for the products. If you're a person who likes the name of the product or you're, you more work in product codes, then you can change that um, within your view. That's basically all I wanted to show for today on the, the mobile app. I'm going to switch back now to my computer and I'm gonna share my, my screen on the computer to show you the Windows app. Now, those of you who are using Windows, um, you can now download the sales matrix SWAT from the app store. That's this little button. Oh, let me just share my screen first. Um, if you come down here, Within Windows, you have this concept of the Microsoft Store now. If you come into the Windows Microsoft Store, you're able to go and search for Sales Matrix, and you'll see Sales Matrix SWAT comes up within the Windows Store. It, it's a free app to download. We obviously charge our subscription outside of the Windows Store. But once you've installed that on your computer, you then get to log into the Windows app which some people like because it takes up more real estate space and they also wanna be able to use it in, in the office, um, et cetera. It's the same username and password that you use to log in on your mobile. And when I log in, you will see there's a different look and feel. It, it's ultimately the same product. We, we use a development language called Xamarin, which allows us to write one piece of source code and deploy it across Apple, Android, and Windows. But each product has its own um, different ways that it presents data. The user interface of Windows is quite different to Android, is quite different to Apple. So whilst it's the same product and the same logic applies, there is a slightly different look and feel to it. Um, you'll see all the functionality here is the same, except for this thing I mentioned about notifications. So within my notifications area, I'm, I'm now starting to see the ability to send and receive um, notifications. If I also now jump into the administrator portal, and I'm going to jump in as demo. So the administrator portal is now customerswat.com. If you are the administrator, you do have access to this with your username and password. If you're not the administrator, you won't have access. Um, the way that notifications work at the moment is that we're able to um, effectively um, send notifications to individuals within the organization. So I could come in here and I could make a message that I want to send to Matt. And the message might be, have a good weekend. And I'm going to basically just send that through as a note. Uh, there's different types I can send it through. Let's just call it other. And I'm gonna send that to demo. And then I can put whatever text in there. Now this might be a message I send out to all my reps about, hey, we've got a new product line that we want you to send. 
uh, to, to, to promote. Um, but the idea behind it is once I hit send, within the application now, if I give it a moment, you'll now see that notification come through. Now that notification within um, Android and, um, and uh, Apple will pop up as a notification, even if they're not logged into the phone. You know how you get the little red notification icon within your social media accounts and those sorts of things? We will pop up a little notification to tell you about that particular notification. Now, the idea where we're going to take notifications, it's not just a messaging service like this. We just had to start with the messaging service because that, to be honest, is the real complicated bit. Uh, what we're going to do over the next few months up until the end of the, the calendar year, we're going to build out automated notifications. That is, if you're in the system and you're assigned to certain customers and the AI algorithms notice a pattern such as this customer normally buys these products every three weeks, but they haven't bought it for a month and a half. Um, we will push you a notification to bring that to your attention. And so you'll start to get proactive informing of what is happening within um, the SWAT app. As I said, it, it's a journey we're on. To be honest, the notifications have been much, much more complicated to build than the team ever expected. But as I said, it's now available in this simple form within the Windows app. Um, over the next month, it will start to appear in the Android and Apple app. And ultimately, um, you will find it coming through um, in an automated way based on the AI algorithms, not just on people manually sending out those, those notifications. Um, I, I want to jump back to the, the portal because I want to show a few more things within the portal. This is where you come in and you, you administer your users. Um, we, I won't go in that today. It's pretty straightforward. If you want to add or remove users, you do that through customerswat.com slash admin. Uh, just make sure you're using HTTPS when you log into that website. So it's HTTPS colon backslash customerswat.com slash admin. Um, there's some things in here that you may never use, but it's good to know that they exist. Um, you can actually specify some of the sensitivities around the AI algorithms and, and what we expect um, may happen and what our target days and what our multipliers are. Each of these will come with a little information that explains what they are. I can change my date formats, for example. So there's, there's a few variables there. You can also change the wording. If you don't like the way SWAT words particular things, every one of those notifications, that, sorry, every one of those SWAT strings that we send through are just defined within the system. So if you, you did want to change any of those, um, we are able to effectively change the individual strings. The category is also coming out of your system. So an example I want to give here is you might have a customer category um, whereby um, a customer category whereby you have a grocery customer group, but within the grocery group, you have your majors and you have your um, independence, for example. So what you might do is one of the groups coming out of your ERP system may have been supermarkets. But in effect, and let's just pretend that is this grouping here. Um, I may have another grouping coming out, which is the type or the type of supermarket. So I don't necessarily want to look at my groups by supermarkets and I can tick that off, but I do want to look by the type of supermarket. So this is where it interacts with the script coming out of your ERP system. And we can turn on or off as to whether the grouping at the top level um, should be um, used in the AI algorithms to, to determine what like for like is. The other important area of, of the, the admin portal is logs. Every time your users log into the system, it will record uh, day and time and number of customers and products that they do look up. Um, and what it does, it does aggregate that across the day. So if I've logged in multiple times throughout today and I've looked at, you can see here, 31 customers and three products, it will continue to aggregate that throughout the day as I, I'm logging back in. And it is from the point of login. So when I put in my username and password each time to, to log in, um, then on a different date, it would record as a different uh, activity. The other thing that's very, very new is we have given you now the ability to change your scripts. This is an example of an attache script where we basically, the, the um, script that it's pulling out of your system 
if you have the capability of editing the scripts, you can come into the admin portal yourself and edit it. And we have brought in the concept of advanced um, scripts. I'm not going to go into that today because most people on the line are reps and not the sort of technical people who will want to get in and, and do crazy things with the scripts. But we have added some, some key functionality in that area. Um, look, that's bringing us to an end on, on time-wise, being on uh, one thirty. Um, what I will say is this session has been recorded, as have our other sessions in the past and, and earlier today. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. If you just go to Sales Matrix, uh, to YouTube and search for Sales Matrix SWAT, you will find some how-to videos. Um, if there were some of your staff weren't able to make today, then by all means, I should have this video up by late this afternoon. Um, you can send them a link to the YouTube channel or this particular video at that point in time. Um, I'd like to thank you all for um, attending. Uh, please reach out to me. Uh, my contact details is matt at saleswat.com. That's M A T T at saleswat.com. If there's any questions that came up from today, um, please do reach out. Uh, but, that, but for now, that's been our half an hour together today. Have a great long weekend for those in states who are having a long weekend and all the best. Thank you.